This video is sponsored by DNG Law. More on them later. The 420 commu- I mean Bellsprout commute day is this weekend in Pokemon Go. And today, as always, I want to throw all the tips and tricks you need to know for this event. So let's get into it right now. Okay, so this event is going to be April 20th from 2 to 5 p.m. Your local time. Bonuses during the events. Bellsprouts will be spawning everywhere in the wild with a shiny rate of 1 in 25. There will be 3 times catch Stardust, 2 times catch Candy, 2 times chance of getting an XL Candy when catching Pokemon for trainers above level 31, 3 hour lure modules, 3 hour incenses, 5 snapshots during the day for 5 photobombs with Bellsprout, 2 extra special trades during the day, and trades will require 50% less Stardust to perform. By the way, the trade bonuses are going to be going down all the way until 10 p.m. Also, you can evolve Weeping Bell, Bellsprout's evolution, into Victory Bell during the event to get its new legacy fast attack magical leaf. Note, even if you have a Shadow Bellsprout and you evolve it into Victory Bell, it will still get its legacy fast attack because frustration normally blocks the charge attacks, but this is a fast attack. So yeah, you can evolve your Shadow Bellsprouts or your regular Bellsprouts and get this new legacy fast move, which we'll talk about if it's any good later in this video. Also, after community day from 5 to 10 p.m. will be the bonus four-star raid battles in which Weeping Bell will be in four-star raids. You cannot use remote raid passes to complete these raids, but if you do complete one for the next 30 minutes within 300 meters of the gyms, Bell Sprouts will be spawning everywhere with the same shiny rate. Just great for people who might miss the initial time frame and want to play a bit more. Research during the event, field research tasks are going to be the task catch three Bell Sprouts for a Bell Sprout encounter, five Great Balls, two Pineapple Berries, two Ultra Balls, or 500 Stardust. And there will of course be a $1 community day special research story you can go ahead and buy. You don't need to buy it to play the event, but you get some extra encounters, some extra items, all that stuff. It's usually worth a dollar if you want to invest. Finally, of course, exclusive stickers available in in Pokestops from opening gifts and in the in-game shop. With the event details out of the way, let's get right into the tips, starting with, as always, what are the perfect IV CPs you should be looking out for for Bellsprout? Well, on screen is gonna be Bellsprout's perfect IV chart, showing you a Hundo Bellsprout from level one all the way to level 50, but only a couple of these we actually care about. First of all, if you get a Bellsprout from research, whether that be field special, all that stuff, level 15 is the level it's gonna be caught at, so 443 CP is the CP you should be looking out for. If you're catching Bellsprouts in the wild during non-weather boost conditions, Bellsprout gets boosted in sunny and cloudy weather, you're going to be looking for the level 30 wild hundo. 886 CP is going to be what you're looking out for. But if you are playing and catching Bellsprouts in sunny or cloudy weather, level 35 will be the highest level Bellsprout you can find in the wild. So 959 CP is going to be the hundo. Other than that though, there's of course, you know, 32 other 100% IV CPs you could find for Bellsprouts in the wild. So of course, my best tip as always, catch everything you see and also join a local Facebook or a local Discord group or a local campfire group where people will sometimes shout out the hundo they catch, you can go ahead and drive, run over, scooter over, catch it for yourself. However, you don't always want 100% IV. Sometimes you want PVP IVs, which are low attack, high defense, high stamina, as it'll make your Pokemon bulkier for PVP. If you want to know why you want these IVs, check out the video up here. So I want to go through what the rank one IVs are for a Victory Bell in the Great League Ultra League and Master League, so you guys can be ready. First of all, any Victory Bell for the Great League, a 115-15 is going to be the rank one best possible IV. But again, anything low attack, high defense, high stamina, as you can see here, you know, a 314-13 will do fine. In the Ultra League, a zero 15, 12 is going to be the rank one possible best IV set for a victory bell. But again, anything low attack, high defense, high stamina. And then finally, of course, in the Master League, 15, 15, 15, a hundo is what you want because there's no CP cap. This is pvpivs.com. So you can come to this website, by the way, if you want to check them out. But it brings the question, is victory bell actually going to be any good? And is it actually going to be any better with this new move, Magical Leaf? Let's talk about it. Now, as far as a raid attacker, the shadow version of victory bell, which you can actually get shadow bell sprouts right now from battling a decoy Giovanni grunt. If you have the black Arcade raider, you can equip it and you'll find these decoy Giovanni grunts at Pokestops. Defeat one, you get a Shadow Bellsprout, which you can of course evolve into Shadow Victory Bell. Not including Mega Pokemon, Shadow Victory Bell is actually the number five overall damage per second grass type raid attacker in Pokemon Go. Although Kartana, you know, just destroys that category by a landslide, it's still an option. Also for poison type raid attacker, Shadow Victory Bell is actually gonna be the number two overall damage per second poison type raid attacker just behind Shadow Toxicroak. So overall, this is not a bad Pokemon by any means for raids. Is it worth the full investment compared to other things you can invest into? Probably not, but it is still nice. It is a dual type attacker. So you've powered up, you get it for both types. But where Shadow Victory Bell definitely shines more is going to be in PVP. Victory Bell right now with Razor Leaf actually already does pretty good in the Great League, having a 14 wins, 24 losses, about a 50% win ratio here with Razor Leaf, Leaf Blade, and Acid Spray, and is featured on some very popular teams like one called Grass Hole, where you switch to bait out the flying type and then switch into another thing. Now, however, with with Magical Leaf, you can see it's getting a big buff, 21 wins to 19 losses. Now, in terms of the shadow version here, you're going to see 18 wins, 
20 losses with the original Razor Leaf moveset, and the Magical Leaf moveset giving you 21 wins and 19 losses. Overall, for the Shadow version of Victory Bell, this is not the biggest upgrade, but for the regular version of Victory Bell, this definitely makes this Pokemon better for the Great League. Personally, I consider it more of a side grade because I do believe Razor Leaf Victory Bell has a lot of uses where it just kind of shreds through the opponent, does so much damage. But if you're trying to play Victory Bell and use more charge moves and stuff, maybe consider Razor Leaf. Overall, I always recommend getting yourself a Great League, an Ultra League, and a Master League version of every single Calm Day Pokemon in case they get even more buffed in the future. But again, this is a great one to grab. Get one for the Great League, get the Shadow version as well from the Grunts, and evolve a couple to get their new moves. Wait, before we continue with the tips, I need to give a huge shout to today's sponsor, DNG Law. DNG Law is a multidisciplinary law firm which can help you with any of your lawyer needs. If you're in Ottawa, Ontario and need any sort of legal help, like if you stole all my shiny luck, I'm looking at you, Rubber Ducky 456 you know who you are. Then click the first link in the description or in the pinned comments, send them a message and they will be happy to help you out. Also, the owner plays Pokemon Go, which is super cool, although I've seen his account. His shiny luck makes me a little bit salty. Anyway, thanks again to DNG Law Firm for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description. Back to the tips. However, Victory Bell is not the only reason to play this Calm Day because there's an amazing bonus three times catch Stardust. And that is honestly probably the number one reason why you actually wanna play this Calm Day. If you don't know when you catch a Pokemon, you normally get 100 Stardust. On three times catch Stardust, that's gonna be 300 Stardust. And if you throw on a Star Piece, which will 1.5 times your Stardust gains for 30 minutes, you're getting 450 Stardust per catch. Let's say you catch 200 Pokemon an hour and you play for all three hours. That's gonna be 270,000 Stardust in just three hours, which is huge gains. If you catch even more Pokemon than that, you're gonna get even more Stardust. So overall, during this event, I recommend putting Star Piece on for the whole time while you're playing and catch as many Pokemon as you can. Using techniques like the Quick Catch technique, which I'll link below a video on how to do that, will allow you to catch Pokemon even faster so you can really maximize your gains. Also, if you've been stacking any boosted Stardust Pokemon like Sableye, Audino, and all that stuff in your field research stack tasks, you can go ahead and catch those during this event as well because you'll be multiplying those Stardust gains as well and also Combi. So definitely go ahead and catch all your stack tasks and again, put on your Star Piece catch as many Pokemon as you can. I actually recently made a video on me catching a thousand Pokemon in an hour, which I will link below for you guys to check out after this video if you want to know how to catch Pokemon really quick and how that was even possible. But another resource, of course, you can get during this calm day is going to be candy. So let's run through my top candy tips to grind during this event. Number one, use pineapple berries. Regular pineapple berries will multiply your catch candy by two and silvers by 2.34. Definitely throw those pineapple berries on any bell sprouts you catch during the day. Also, you can go ahead and mega evolve a Pokemon. If you don't know when you mega evolve a Pokemon, any Pokemon you catch and shares a type with that Mega, you will get more candy, XP, and XL candy. So you wanna make sure you have the proper Mega Mega Evolved for Bellsprout. Now, Bellsprout is gonna be a grass and poison type Pokemon, which means Mega Evolving either a Mega Venusaur, a Mega Beedrill, a Mega Gengar, a Mega Sceptile, a Mega Obama Snow, or a Primal Groudon will all get you more candies for Bellsprout. So definitely go ahead, make sure one of those is Mega Evolved during the event, or else you're gonna be missing out on so many candies. You can also, of course, use Spatial Rend, the adventure effect on Palkia, which costs Stardust and Palkia. Palkia candies, but it will double the distance in which you can see spawns, allowing you to see more bell sprouts, catch more bell sprouts, and get more candy. So if you really care about bell sprout candies, maybe invest a little bit into spatial rend. It'll just allow you to grind so much more efficiently. But again, you're really gonna make sure you're catching all the Pokemon to make up for that stardust cost you're using to run spatial rend. But we do have three times cash jars, so it shouldn't be too hard. You can also, of course, go ahead and trade away Pokemon. If you don't know when you trade away Pokemon, you will get a bell sprout candy. But if the distance between where those two Pokemon are caught is over 100 kilometers, for example, a Pokemon from New York being traded with a Pokemon from Paris, you're gonna get two regular candies and one guaranteed XL candy. So definitely find a friend if you can who has recently gone on a trip or something who can trade you some distance Pokemon to get more Bellsprout candies. But if you can't, regular trading Bellsprouts is still great because when you're randomly trading Pokemon, there is a chance that they go lucky in which luckies have a 164 odds of being a 100% IV. So if you really want a Bellsprout Hundo during this Calm Day or a Victory Bell Hundo or whatever, definitely go ahead and mirror trade a bunch of those after Calm Day and you'll probably get the Hundo. That's my number one tip for Calm Day is just always save the Pokemon and mirror trade them after. Finally, go ahead and transfer away Pokemon. The next transfer candy spotlight hour will be sometime in May. So definitely go ahead and hold on to Bellsprouts if you really, really want a lot of extra Bellsprout candies and transfer them during a spotlight hour in May, which I will have a graphic on when that is coming out soon. But if you don't really care and need the storage space, you can transfer them. It's not a big deal. And finally, you need 35 Platinum Mel Scope level 48 to 49 in Pokemon Go. So which ones should we be working on during this event? Let's go through my Platinum Metal tips. Of course, the Gardner Metal Catch 2500 Grass types, self-explanatory, as well as the Poison. 
poison version here, the punk metal. Bellsprout is a poison and grass type. We also have the picnicker metal. Use a lure module to help any trainer catch 2,500 Pokemon. You know, you have three hour lures, go to the busiest area in your city, be the first person there and drop lures before anyone gets there. When everybody starts showing up, they're gonna be catching Bellsprouts off of your lures, helping work on this metal without them even knowing. Of course, you get the five snapshots during the calm day. So make sure you take them to work on your cameraman metal. Have 400 encounters, go snapshot. You know, don't forget, take your snapshots. Always take your snapshots. We also, of course, have the Pokemon Ranger Metal, complete 2,500 research tasks. You know, the research tasks during Calm Days, some of the easiest. Catch three of the Pokemon that are spawning everywhere in the wild. So great time to work on this metal if you really want to go ahead and complete it. And of course, the research task encounters have a high odds of being a hundo. I also want to give a shout out to the Tiny Pokemon Collector Metal and the Jumbo Pokemon Collector Metal. If you catch any extra small or extra large bell spreads during the day, don't be scared to evolve them twice because every time you evolve an extra large or extra small, you will get an extra point towards this metal. So, you know, you have so many bell sprout candies, you're gonna be catching so many, might as well do it. But what you can also use those extra larges and extra smalls for are the showcases. Win 100 Pokestop showcases, the showcase star metal, a great one to work on during this calm day. Again, always see if you can go to the less busy areas and drop into showcases there. You'll have a higher chance of winning as there is less competition. It's just simple, you know, try to win those showcases and complete this metal and potentially get that PhD Pikachu. If you guys enjoy this video, you will enjoy the one below. Good luck during Bellsprout calm day. And again, shout out to DNG Law for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. We'll see y'all next one. Far for tips. Peace.